what is the relationship between sleep and weight loss? Yeah, a few things. One, when you don't get sufficient sleep, you have increased uh, ghrelin release, which makes you hungrier, makes you want to eat more. You also have compromised insulin sensitivity, uh, which uh, makes it a little easier for you to to gain weight. You, you, sorry, you've mentioned insulin sensitivity a couple of times today, like just high level, what's that? Yeah, we would say, say pre-diabetic or diabetic is that when you eat foods, your blood sugars elevate and there's no place to store them because you're over fat, your fat stores are full. And so you, you can't put those there. Your muscles uh, maybe don't have sufficient muscle mass to, to store that there. And then that stays elevated for an extended Not period good. of time. Right. Okay. Understood. So sleep, weight loss. Sleep does affect uh, insulin levels as well. We also find that uh, people who don't get sufficient sleep, when they start losing weight, they might lose uh, a, a disproportionate amount of muscle as opposed to fat. The body becomes stingy at preserving the fat. Uh, and so those are all things that can happen. Uh, other, other, it, just being awake more hours in the day gives you another opportunity to get hungry and eat. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Sleep through one meal and you're probably better off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wow. Whole host of benefits from uh, getting sufficient sleep. Would you say that sleep is more important than cardio for fat loss? Well, I did put it this way once. I said, if you're waking up at 4 a.m. to do your fasted cardio after only five hours of sleep, you're stepping over $100 bills to pick up nickels. And that's been something I've said for many years. If somebody had, to me, I would, I would do the cardio later. Or I don't even really recommend cardio at all to most of my clients because it's a pretty significant departure from their standard lifestyle. And it might not be something they enjoy. It might not be very sustainable, and we see it has diminishing returns over time as your body kind of adapts to that stimulus and reduce, becomes more efficient and reduces the calorie it burns. I focus on non-exercise. And another thing is, is that too much exercise activity, particularly aggressive exercise activity, I'm not shitting on any of these forms. If the best exercise is the one you'll do, if you enjoy doing it, do it. Uh, but if somebody goes, starts crushing themselves, I, I call it battle ropes and burpees, thinking that they're going to burn calories just you know, to, for fat loss. Uh, a phenomenon called compensation takes over where you just go home and sit more and eat more because you're hungry. You know, you're tired. And you from, earned it. You yeah, just trained well. Hey, and you can burn 300 calories in one of those battle rope and burpee episodes and you can go home and have one piece of bread and negate all of your, all of your gains or losses, we should say. Uh, but I'm cautious about prescribing cardio for weight loss, uh, for all of those reasons. Prescribe an extra hour's sleep instead. I prescribe an extra hour's sleep and more non-exercise activity. I just think that the barriers to entry, having to come home, get in your car, drive to the gym, do your cardio, I mean, we're too busy, especially if you've got a family and a career. That's, that's the first thing that gets sacrificed in that scenario. That's why I love the 10-minute walks because they're more convenient, more sustainable. I can attach them to an existing behavior, which as we know, uh, increases the likelihood that that new behavior will become a habit. Uh, they can be done anywhere at any time. Let's say it's the first time that somebody is hearing about walking as a significant performance enhancer. Yeah. What do we need to know? Frequency, structure, why is it working? What's the best way that you found to integrate it? How do you stick to it? Well, we see dramatic improvements in health span simply from going from 2,000 steps a day to 5,000 steps a day. We see um, a significant decline in, in blood pressure, uh, improvement in heart rate, all the health markers. It also improves satiety of all things, just walking somewhere in that, I want to say about five or 6,000 steps a day. You can get about 1,300 steps from a 10-minute walk. Uh, there is plenty of evidence to suggest that uh, moving periodically throughout the day, say 10 minutes three times a day, is more effective than 30 minutes once a day on, on all-cause mortality as well. Why? Uh, well, it seems that the sitting for an extended period of time actually does some damage and moving more frequently throughout the day, getting your heart rate up, and even if it's five minutes out of every hour while you're at, at work. You know, they got those standing desks or the bike desks and those kinds of things and just movement in general. Um, and then getting sufficient steps in. Now, we do see differences in uh, the intensity of that. You should, they should be deliberate. The heart rate should elevate a bit. I mean, we're not jogging. Uh, you don't necessarily have to, to be out of breath. Um, but 
we see the folks that can get their heart rate elevated just a little bit. You stay in, you know, zone two, I think everybody's talking about now. Is it not such that you can't uh, still talk while you're doing it? Uh, so it should be deliberate. It's tough to get to zone two walking. <laughs> zone two whilst it's walking. Like a, like a 4.0. It's a quick pace. It's a decent pace. It's deliberate, and it should be. You're going to get better benefits from it. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I, I'm not cardiovascularly even <laughs> even remotely competent, but for me, and I wear a whoop. I absolutely love it. Um, I would need to be weight vested, yeah. or I would need to be moving yeah. at one hell of a clip. Yeah, for me, like speed walking, I would look silly to get to, to well, we properly get into zone. That's two. the neat thing about exercise in general and improving your health span is that when you go from what's described as the bottom quartile into say the 50% or above, that's where you see the majority of your health benefits. Yeah. Uh, so I think something is better than nothing. And then I try and f make that something into uh, something that's sustainable and easy to do. On the walk, this is something that I realized while I was talking to a friend, a friend moved into this gorgeous new apartment in Austin on West 7th Street. Mm -hmm. It's on the 23rd floor. He's got a view on three sides. He can see the sunrise and the sunset. It's amazing. If he wants to go for a walk, it takes him seven minutes to get downstairs because there's only three elevators for 1,500 people that live in yeah. this apartment block and so on and so forth. And I was like, dude, like, I, I love this place. And then where I live, I am, as soon as I put my Crocs on, I am about 15 seconds from a park. Yeah. yeah. And it's the first time I live, parents' house is like that back home. My house in Newcastle is kind of similar. And then this one's by far the closest. And it's such a hack. And it's an unseen cost yeah. of vertical living, I, I think. I mean, you know, I can go up and down the stairs and you could take the stairs you for 23 flights. You could, you could but, do 10 minutes of stairs. Yeah, uh, opposed, which would be great. Yeah. But I mean, it's a, you're seeing a gray brick dry stone well, that's another thing it's getting not... exposed to sunlight that's yeah. a whole other psychological sure. benefit of course of course mm. as far as the walk goes you know i've traveled i've been in 12 countries in all 50 states and over 200 seminars in the last five years and so i was in hotel to hotel airport to airport i use the opportunity to walk from security to the gate as a 10 minute walk i use the opportunity at uh at baggage claim, I'm walking around in circles while people are standing there waiting for the baggage thing to go. Such and they're, a good hack. They're looking at me like I'm it, an idiot. My favorite thing, especially at airports, is get to the gate, even if I'm an hour early, which I'm yeah. not usually. And walk. And But have a look. Okay, is it uh, is it going to leave early? Is it going to leave early? This is the actual gate. The gate's not down some secret escalator. There's a bunch yep. of these in London Heathrow. Yeah. Okay, right. I know where I need to go. And I'll just, if you do laps, if you do laps that are 10 minutes, you're never going to miss your flight yeah. because every... You know, you're never more than five minutes away from the gate. And sitting before you're going to be sitting uh, seems like an awful waste of time because you're going to get on that plane. You're going to be sitting for yep. two, three, five, seven hours. You know, okay. So, so uh, three a few more things about walks. Yep. I like to prescribe them post meal. They're twice as effective as metformin for preventing or reversing type two diabetes uh, because of their impact on postprandial glycemia, the after meal blood sugar elevation and duration. Your muscles will uptake the glucose from that meal into glycogen in the absence of need of insulin. So you get less uh, sustained uh, elevated insulin. Uh, additionally, it helps your digestion. Uh, just the, uh, yep, just the musculature, uh, the, uh, uh, the enzymatic action and the muscular contraction. Uh, all of those things are of great benefit. I also find that it helps a lot with people that are trying to recover from things like hips or knees, uh, just to get lots of movement. That's a, a whole but it's also a cue, right? You're going to yeah. have at least two meals a day, sometimes three. Okay, so if you manage to get a morning walk upon waking, which I absolutely adore, yep. uh, it's the most reliable part of a morning routine that's waxed and waned as my workload has changed. Yep. That has not changed. Uh, so for me, wake up, element in water because I, I really enjoy the way that that makes me feel, then walk 10, 15 minutes, get back. Okay, if I walk after the next two meals, there's my three. And yeah. if I actually end up having three meals a day, okay, that's four. Yeah. Um, something else that I noticed when wearing a continuous glucose monitor was that I could see in the data what was happening to yeah. my blood glucose of course. whilst yeah. going on that walk. Absolutely. Here's something to say. Well, last thing on 10-minute walks is that 
Um, we find that that when you do them after meals, again, they become a, a, a habit. Sometimes I'll go to a restaurant at night. I took my daughter to dance class last night. There was a sushi place right, right next door. I went and ate the sushi place. I walked out the door and I set my timer for 10 minutes. I started walking. Your feet had taken you before you'd even planned to do it almost. Yeah. You, you can leave any restaurant, set your clock for five minutes, walk down the street. When the alarm goes off, walk back, then get in your car. So these are really easy, bite-sized, you know, what they call exercise snacks, I think. Is and what sort of an impact are you seeing? So we, we extol the virtues of it, and I live next to a park, and I can be the kind of a dog pervert as well because there's quite a lot of dogs there, and I love dogs. What are the uh, outcomes that you see between somebody that, that doesn't do this and then does, even for a normal, moderately healthy person? Yeah, all the research suggests the satiety benefit, the blood sugar control, uh, just like recharging your battery. You know, if you're at work and you've, you're sitting there for an extended period of time, you start to get tired. A lot of people think that posture contributes to soreness, back tightness, neck tightness. Well, they've studied people that use quote unquote good posture and poor posture. Uh, they have similar outcomes. Some of the good posture people had worse outcomes in, in terms of pain. It was really the duration of time that you stayed in any one position. It wasn't the position itself. And so the movement becomes pretty critical. This episode is brought to you by a product I've used every single day for over three years now, and that is AG1. AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that covers whole body health. It is a staple part of my supplement regime. I take the travel packs with me when I'm on the road, like here in LA, and it really does make a massive difference, especially to my digestion. If your energy levels have been all over the place, if you really feel like you need to make an improvement to your nutrition, this is a fantastic place to start. It's been updated 52 times over the last decade and only uses the best ingredients at the highest quality to make sure that it covers all of your nutritional bases. There is a 90-day money-back guarantee. For 90 days, you can use Athletic Greens, and if you do not like it or are not satisfied with the results, they'll give you your money back. If you're looking for a simpler, effective investment for your health, try AG1 today by going to drinkag1.com slash Modern Wisdom, you'll get a year's free supply of vitamin D, five free AG1 travel packs, plus that 90-day money-back guarantee. That's drinkag1.com slash Modern Wisdom. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that clip with Stan, then press here for the full-length two-and-a-half-hour podcast episode. Go on. Press it.